Hey guys, it's Ari, and today I'm going to walk you through the things you should consider when purchasing either a pre-built or a custom PC for architecture school. So you've gone a few years in architecture school and you're realizing the laptop you've purchased is no longer able to keep up with the design and the workflow that you want. Now I'm going to walk you through the different components and the things that you should consider when purchasing or building a new system. So let's begin. The software you're going to learn in architecture school is going to be wide and varied, and that means the CPU requirements on each will also be wide and varied. My recommendation is to find a CPU that's balanced, a balance between cores and clock speeds. Make sure that you have a good enough clock speed so that you can do stuff like Rhino and Grasshopper, but you also have enough cores to reduce render times and multitask. Rendering software like Maxwell or V-Ray can utilize as many cores as your machine has. So if you're interested in animation or rendering, you may want to search for more cores than higher clock speeds. That being said, searching for a CPU with a decent amount of cores and a nice enough clock speed means that your system will be as viable for longer as you learn new skill sets and as your workflow grows and becomes more complicated. For the amount of cores, I would recommend at least a 6-core 12-thread system, or better. And for the clock speed, I would recommend at least 3 GHz or better also. Now for RAM, I would recommend at least 16 GB. Having more RAM allows your system to have more overhead, and it means it'll be bottlenecked less when multitasking, and programs like Revit or the Adobe Suite will run far more efficiently. Another component to consider when purchasing or building a computer for architecture school is the graphics card. Graphics cards aren't just for running your displays. In some architecture softwares, they can leverage a GPU to help render or co-compute certain processes or tasks. The GPU I would recommend starting with is something of the caliber of a GTX 1060. But if your budget allows for a better GPU, know that the performance gains will be noticeable. In a custom built system, I think it's important when selecting a motherboard that you purchase a motherboard that has all the high-end features enabled for the CPU you've purchased. I also think it's helpful to have extra expansion slots if you want to add extra storage or graphics cards. Also something to consider is solid state storage. It's crucial to have your operating system and your programs run as fast and as efficient as possible. I would recommend starting with a 256GB SSD paired with a 1TB mechanical drive. This should be more than enough for you to hold your programs, operating systems, libraries, and files. Also in a custom system, you're going to have to select a CPU cooler. This can be an air cooler, an all-in-one liquid cooler, or even a custom loop. If this is your first custom system, I'd recommend sticking with an air cooler. It's far less maintenance and it's more cost effective. When selecting a case, all I would recommend is you buy a case with good airflow and make sure it fits your components. For fans, all I would recommend is that you have two in the front, one in the rear. This keeps positive pressure, which means your system should remain happy, cool, and quiet. Hey guys, thanks for watching, and remember to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram.